Welcome to Glacier National Park, home to towering mountains, pristine alpine lakes, abundant wildlife, and over 700 miles of trails. Glacier National Park is a backpacking paradise. Exploring this remarkable yet challenging terrain requires knowledge of backcountry safety, planning for unexpected events, and being fully aware of the inherent risks of backcountry travel. There are no guarantees for your safety, but you can make your trip safer and more enjoyable with planning and preparation. Before your trip, you are required to attain a permit at the Backcountry Permit Office. While at the office, review topographic maps, current snow and water hazards, trail status reports, weather forecasts, and bear and mountain lion activity reports. You will need to have the following trip essentials. Map and compass, sunscreen, extra food and layers, first aid kit, rain gear, a means to start a fire, 25 feet of rope and a sack to hang scented items, means to purify water and water containers, and a headlamp or flashlight. Stay on the trail and avoid cutting switchbacks. Carry your permit in an accessible place in case you come across a ranger in the backcountry. Check trailheads for any recent postings. Trails marked with bear frequenting signs means bears have been seen using the area recently. Trails will be legally closed and posted as such if there is a carcass or other known risk. Glacier National Park is one of the few remaining areas that provides security and habitat for both black and grizzly bears. Although bears can be entertaining to watch, they can also be dangerous. It is illegal to approach within 100 yards of any bear in Glacier National Park. The safest way to travel in bear country is to be proactive. Carry bear spray and know how to use it. Hike in groups. Make noise. Always be aware of your surroundings. And secure your food and garbage at all times. Bear spray is currently the most effective deterrent to bear attacks. The most important thing about bear spray is knowing how to use it. Make sure your spray is readily accessible, not zipped away in your backpack. Keep the safety on at all times unless you are about to deploy the spray. If a bear is charging you, remove the safety and aim for the feet. This can contains about seven seconds worth of spray and can spray between 20 and 30 feet. Hiking in groups significantly decreases your chances of having a negative bear encounter. Bears will usually move out of the way if they hear people approaching. Bells and portable speakers are not effective methods for alerting bears to your presence. Calling out and clapping at regular intervals are more effective at making your presence known. Environmental factors such as wind and rushing water may prevent bears from recognizing your presence. Look for scat or tracks. Take notice if you're hiking near an abundance of bear food or hiking through thick vegetation. Bears hear about as well as humans, so be sure to yell loudly when hiking on windy days or near running water. Never leave food, garbage, or anything used to prepare, consume, store, or transport food unattended. Other scented items include toiletries, feminine products, sunscreen, and stove fuel. Even if you follow all safety precautions, it is still possible to encounter a bear. If you do encounter a bear inside the minimum recommended safe distance, you can decrease your risk by following these guidelines. Stop and assess the situation. If the bear is moving in your direction on a trail, get out of the way and let it pass. If you can move away, do so. If moving away appears to agitate the bear, stop, talk quietly to the bear. Help the bear recognize your group is non-aggressive. 
then continue to move away as the situation allows. If a bear appears intent on approaching your campsite in a non-defensive manner, gather your group together, make noise, and try to discourage the bear from further approaching. If you are preparing or consuming food, secure it. Do not let the bear get your food. Deploy your bear spray if necessary. If a bear approaches in a defensive manner, stop. Do not run. Signs of agitation include swaying or lowered head, huffing, woofing, clacking teeth, laid back ears, and raised hair on shoulders. Agitated bears may charge. Hey, bear. Hey, bear. Talk quietly to the bear. If contact appears imminent, deploy your bear spray. If the bear continues to attack, fall to the ground on your stomach. Clasp your hands around the back of your neck and leave your pack on for protection. If the bear attempts to roll you over, try to stay on your stomach. If the attack is defensive, the bear will leave once it recognizes you are not a threat. If the attack is prolonged or the bear starts to eat you, fight back in any way that you can. Mountain lions also roam glaciers backcountry. If you encounter one, make yourself look as large as possible and back away slowly while speaking in a firm tone. Hey, hey, hey. Keep small children protected within your group and never run or turn your back on a mountain lion. If an attack occurs, fight back. Please report any bear or mountain lion sightings, encounters, or incidents to a ranger as soon as possible. While a bear or mountain lion encounter is possible, it is more likely you will see wildlife such as mountain goats, moose, elk, deer, and bighorn sheep. It is important to recognize that although these animals are not predators, they can be unpredictable and dangerous. They may attack if approached or feel threatened. Some animals are attracted to the salt and sweat in urine. Be sure to secure your sweat-soaked items and use the pit toilet while in camp. Enjoy all animals from a distance and never intentionally approach, harass, or feed any wild animal. Upon arrival to your campground, the first thing you should do is use the map to locate the food storage area and immediately secure your food, garbage, cookware, stove fuel, and all other scented items. Never enter any other areas of the campground with these scented items. All food, garbage, cookware, stove fuel, and other scented items must be secured when not attended. To reduce resource damage, you are required to set up your tent in a designated tent site. A maximum of two tents and four people are allowed per site. Food preparation and consumption is only allowed in the designated food preparation area. Strain any wastewater from cooking and washing dishes and broadcast the strained gray water near the food prep area. Then hang strained food matter with the rest of your garbage. Never throw food scraps or garbage into the pit toilets. It may cause bears to destroy toilet structures or dig into the pit. Do not use soap in lakes or streams, even if they are biodegradable. Washing dishes and bathing should be done on land at least 100 feet away from any water source. Make sure all garbage and micro trash have been picked up. Do not leave any items for someone else to pack out. When breaking camp, the last place you should visit as you are leaving the campground is the food storage area to pack your food before getting back on the trail. Falls are one of the leading causes of fatalities in the park. Watch your footing and be mindful that the type of rock and glacier is not ideal for climbing. Glacier's rugged terrain can create unexpected weather events. Snow may fall at any time of year. In many years, snowfields linger well into July, requiring steep, 
hazardous crossings, and some route finding. An ice axe and crampons combined with proper training is recommended to safely cross these snowfields. During heavy periods of rain and high spring runoff, large volumes of water can create dangerous river and stream crossings. When crossing water, scout for the easiest route. Unbuckle your backpack's waist strap, wear shoes for stability, face upstream, and use trekking poles as a third point of contact with the stream bed. If hiking in a group, stack in a single file line and cross together. Rain, wind, cooler temperatures, and crossing streams are factors that can reduce your body's core temperature. If your core temperature drops too low, a life-threatening condition known as hypothermia may result. Symptoms of hypothermia include impaired judgment, shivering, reluctance to move, and collapsing. To prevent its occurrence, dress in breathable layers, have sufficient rain and wind gear, carry extra clothes, and drink plenty of fluids. Prevent heat exhaustion and dehydration by staying well hydrated and not exerting yourself beyond your limits. Water in cold, high mountain streams may contain giardia, bacteria, or other viruses that cause severe intestinal problems. These organisms get into the watershed from animals and also because human waste has not been disposed of properly. Before drinking water from any source, it should be filtered by using a water purifier that filters down to one micron. Use the pit toilets in the campgrounds to avoid resource damage and to concentrate waste. Toilet paper is not provided and it should be the only product thrown into the pit toilet. Plastic or other non-biodegradable toiletries should be packed out. Where a pit toilet is not available, urinate on hard surfaces to prevent animals from digging for salts and minerals found in urine. Dig a cat hole 6 to 8 inches deep away from the trail and 200 feet away from any water source. If you use toilet paper on the trail, pack it out. Not all of Glacier's campgrounds allow fires. Check the backcountry guide for the fire policy at your designated campground. If fires are allowed, make sure they are small and properly contained in the provided fire ring. Use wrist size or smaller dead and downed wood. Do not burn garbage or food scraps. When leaving the fire area, make sure the fire is completely extinguished. If you plan on fishing in the park, you should read the current fishing regulations site bulletin to learn the rules and regulations. Pets and wheeled vehicles are not allowed in Glacier's backcountry. However, visitors with disabilities may access backcountry trails using wheelchairs or other assistive devices. Trained service dogs require a service animal permit. Service dogs are prohibited on trails posted for bear frequenting. If you plan on using private stock in the park, read the current Private Stock Use Site Bulletin to learn the rules and regulations. If your itinerary takes you across the U.S.-Canadian border, a current passport or enhanced driver's license is required. You must check in with customs during operating hours. Overnight camping regulations apply to river use within Glacier National Park. Speak with the rangers at the Backcountry Permitting Office for more information. These rules and regulations are designed to protect both you and the park. By following them, you are ensuring that other visitors will have the same opportunity to enjoy the natural and cultural resources of the park. Please report any camping or permit violations to the nearest park ranger as soon as possible. Thank you for supporting Glacier National Park and enjoy your experience in the backcountry. Mm -hmm.